Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on everybody? This is Joseph Collin coming to you tonight with your NXT review on Tuesday, September 8th, 2020. Tonight's episode of NXT, the beginning was awesome, the ending was fun, but besides that, this show was all filler. This entire show would be all filler. So much filler to the back, to the fact that after the Adam Cole Finn Balor match, if I wanted to, I could have hopped on my Xbox, played a game or two of Madden, and came back for the main event, and I would have missed nothing. I would have missed Absolutely nothing. This was a lackluster filler. At some points, I was bored. I was bored when, at some points during the show. Nothing really important happened outside of the beginning and the end of tonight's NXT. A very lackluster show. So, and it's not really newsworthy besides the fact that Finn Balor is the new NXT champion. And we're going to dive right into it right here on the review. But if you guys have not already, make sure you check my Monday Night Raw review out um, here on the channel from last night. There's almost at 100 views so if you have not already check out the monday night raw review from last night and without further ado let's talk about nxt we're not going to be here for a while tonight we're probably going to be exactly like last night to 20 minutes and then we'll get out of here so this show opened up with finn balor and adam cole for the nxt championship this match was awesome this match was awesome. The only problem I had with it was I wish that the new champion was crowned last week in the 60-minute Iron Man match and not this week. The only reason why they did this match this week is because of ratings. It's because of ratings and the fact that they had nothing else eye-opening on the show for this week besides Mercedes Martinez. And Rhea Ripley. If you did not, if they did not book this NXT Championship match tonight, this would have been a complete snooze vest of an episode of NXT. But they did this because of ratings and to get viewers in. But the match itself, the match was awesome. Finn Balor is amazing. Adam Cole is one of my favorite superstars in the world. I think Adam Cole is one of the best. In the world. To step in this ring. In the ring. And do professional wrestling. He's one of the best. In the world. So I knew this was going to be awesome. They had a great match. Back in December. For the NXT Championship. And I thought this one was better. I thought this one was better. The finish was very creative. That was very cool. Lots of near, lots of near falls. This match went close to 30 minutes. I believe this match went maybe exactly 30 minutes. But Balor hit a coup de grace and Cole kicked out. And then Cole counted back with a super kick. And then later on, Balor was sitting up and Cole hit the last shot. And I actually thought Adam Cole was going to win the NXT Championship right there. I knew the majority thought Finn Balor was going to win this match and so did I. I swear to you, man, right when Adam Cole hit last shot, I'm like, that's it. The match is over. Adam Cole's going to be the new NXT champion. But no, Finn Balor kicked out. Finn Balor kicked out of the uh, last shot. Then Cole goes on the top for the Panama Sunrise. Balor gets on the top. He looks like he's going for a superplex. He reverses it. 
into a top rope 1916 and Finn Balor. Finn Balor is the new NXT champion. I could not feel any happier for Finn Balor. A, it was the right decision. That was the right outcome. I love Adam Cole. I'm gonna t I could talk to you guys for five hours about how much I love Adam Cole. But if Adam Cole had won this match, if Adam Cole won the NXT Championship back, what are we accomplishing? You know, this man is the longest reigning NXT champion. And he just dropped the championship back in July. So Adam Cole is always going to have that title reign to remember. Finn Balor winning the NXT championship was the correct outcome. And quite frankly, Finn Balor hasn't felt the same. Finn Balor hasn't felt right since relinquishing the Universal Championship. He relinquished it back in 2016 when he got hurt. He came back in 2017. He did not feel the same. They put him in a feud with Bray Wyatt. It was okay. Uh, that was when J Bray Wyatt was a jobber. Then after that, I don't even remember what they did with him. They put him in a feud with, I believe, Seth Rollins or The Miz for the Intercontinental Championship. And then what, what ruined him, in my opinion was putting him in a three-month feud with Baron Corbin, of all people. That ruined him. That ruined Finn Balor. That made me not care about Finn Balor on the main roster. He has not felt the same since relinquishing the Universal Championship. Then he came back down to NXT in 2019, which, quite frankly, looking back on it, was the right decision. That was Absolutely the right decision for Finn Balor to do after he lost to the Fiend Bray Wyatt last year was to go back down to NXT because it just wasn't working on the main roster with Finn Balor. Finn Balor, Finn Balor is a Triple H guy. He is 100% a Triple H guy. He's not a Vince guy. He's a Triple H guy. Triple H loves Finn Balor. And now Finn Balor is the NXT champion. And you know what, man? I could not be any happier for Finn Balor and becoming the new NXT champion. Who his first feud with is going to be for the NXT champion? I don't know. I have no clue. People are saying Tommaso Ciampa. My opinion, it's too early. If they're doing Tommaso Ciampa and Finn Balor, Finn Balor could possibly lose the title in his first defense. I don't really want that to happen. So, Finn Balor defeated Adam Cole in an awesome match to start NXT. This should have main evented the show, not the damn steel cage match. This should have closed the show. So, from here on out, this entire show was complete filler. Starting with an interview with Robert Stone. She then, he then walked into Shotzi Blackheart. And Aaliyah attacked Shotzi Blackheart. And they ran through a curtain. And Aaliyah accidentally bumped into Io Shirai when she was taking a photo shoot. So Io chased Aaliyah out to the ring. Shotzi Blackheart was out there. They were cornering Aaliyah and Robert Stone. They... Both beat them down. EO hit a moonsault on Robert Stone. While Shotzi hit a set time on Aaliyah. Shotzi picked up the NXT Women's Championship. And she's about to hand it over to EO Shirai. But she yanks it away from her. And she holds up the NXT Women's Championship. And she gives it back to EO Shirai. Now at that point, I was like... Oh my goodness, yes. This is the perfect, this is the perfect NXT Women's Championship match for your next takeover. But they ruined it. They ruined it by booking Io Shirai and Shotzi Blackheart in a non-title match for next week's NXT. Why would you do that? 
Shotzi is the perfect number one contender for that women's championship at the next takeover. Why you book this one-on-one -on -one non title match that the champion is gonna win? I don't know. It's kind of stupid. Shotzi should be building herself up, getting win after win, like she's been doing. And then she fights EO at TakeOver. Now who who's going to challenge EO? Candice could be Candice, but she's feuding with Tegan Knox right now. So that's just my opinion on that. And we got into the Velveteen Dream. He faced a jobber, and I did not care. Face and phone was I, I was during this match. Four minutes, then Kushida attacked Velveteen Dream, and yeah, they're feuding now. After Dream attacked Kushida after a match a few weeks ago. So, it's whatever. Velveteen Dream doesn't feel the same. He is not special anymore. And quite frankly, if I'm NXT, I'm putting Kushida over. Because he needs it as more than Velveteen Dream does. I feel like if, if Velveteen Dream goes over in this mini feud, I, I feel like you're doing the wrong thing and you're just mistreating Kushida. So we move to Timothy Thatcher, who is up on the chalkboard and he's watching a film on Damian Priest. I mean, he is the number one contender, I guess. And he was studying Damien Priest. Okay, that that was pretty random by Thatcher. But, I mean, whatever. Bronson Reed versus Austin Theory. This was decent. Nothing nothing special here. I was, I was kind of expecting Austin Theory to get the win since he just returned. But Bronson Reed won this match. He got most of the offense in this match anyway. Reed, uh, Theory was trying to lift up Bronson Reed for the ATL finisher. Uh, Theory collapsed. He couldn't lift up Bronson Reed. Bronson then hit a, a set on Theory, the back of Theory's back. And then um, he hit his tsunami splash. And Bronson Reed got the victory. It is what it is. Decent match. Nothing special. Uh, they clearly have an investment in Bronson Reed. And I'll tell you what. They have won me over with Bronson Reed. They really have. They've, they won me over with Bronson Reed. I'm a fan of the guy now. Roderick Strong versus Killian Dane. I did not care about this match. Just like the Velveteen Dream stuff. Face in phone. This match went 11 minutes. Strong one with a high knee strike. And then after the match, they beat down Killian, Dr uh, Killian Dane. Drake Maverick came out with a baseball bat to save Killian Dane. He offered his hand to Killian Dane. Killian Dane looked at his hand and punched Drake in the face. Who cares? Who, who cares? Killian Dane ain't going anywhere. Neither is Drake Maverick. So why not feud them together? I guess that's the method. We got dinner with Ken Slaray and Tegan Knox. Uh, this was going on throughout the entire night. Candice invited Tegan to talk this out. So Tegan was there. She entered the house. Johnny Gargano greeted her with a, a, he was being all smiley. Hi, how are you? He said, high five, down low, too slow, messing with Tegan. Then Candice got in. She said hello. And she said, get yourself comfortable. Have a seat at the dinner table. Let's all have dinner together. They go to commercial. A few seconds later, uh, they're, they're just sitting there. And they're all like, this doesn't feel comfortable. No one's talking. And Johnny was like, I'll get up and leave. I'll eat dinner upstairs. I'll go read a bedtime story to the kids or whatever. So it was just Tegan 
and Candace at the dinner table. Candace is like, Tegan, I just, I, I think you don't just, I, I don't think you get the Gargano way. You don't get the new way. And Tegan's like, I, I, I want, I want the old Candace. And Candace is like, I'm still your big sister. And then Tegan was shaking his head. And he said, I don't know if you're just jealous. I don't know if you want to be in it with us, but it's the new way around here. It's the Gargano way. And then we could get to the top and then I'll, I'll be the, I'll be the next contender for the NXT Women's Championship. And she's like, wait, wait, wait. Next contender for the NXT Women's Championship, I'll be the next contender. But Candice was like, no, nah, Tegan, I mean, you already had your shot. It was, a good, it was a good match against Dio, but you came up just a little bit short. And then, and then she said, I, I don't know about that, Candice. So Candice then takes a bowl of salad and, and she dumps it all over Tegan. Then Tegan takes a glass of whatever she was drinking and she throws it at Candace's face. John and they're bickering. And Johnny's like, hey, what's going on in here? Candace throws something at Tegan. Tegan ducked and I think it was a fork or something. The fork hit the TV. Uh, the Gargano's TV broke. And then... Uh, Tegan dumped a whole bowl of spaghetti on Johnny Gargano and ran out of the house. I don't really know what to say about this. The whole food thing, the whole food fighting, I, I thought was very corny. It was pretty corny. I don't know what to make of it. The feud should be good, but at the end of the day, this is just another step for Candice LeRae before it. She eventually gets to Io Shirai in the NXT Women's Championship. This is just, you know, another step forward. She feuded with Mia Yim. Now she's feuding with uh, Tegan Knox, And then I'm sure, more than likely, she's going to be Tegan Knox. So then after this, uh, it's, it's Io. It's on to Io and the NXT Women's Championship for Candice LeRae. So... We'll see what happens. We got a few match announcements for next week's NXT. Uh, I don't know if they're unopposed or not. I don't know if they're back on Wednesday. I know they're back on Wednesdays next week, but I don't know if AEW's on Thursday or whatever day, but we'll see. If it's back to both shows going on Wednesday, I will be back on NXT on Thursday nights. It'll probably be uh, Thursday nights for now on uh, with school and football. So you guys can expect the NXT reviews in the near future on Thursday nights. So we got match announcements for next week's show. Damian Priest versus Timothy Thatcher for the North America Championship, which should be good. I'm looking forward to that match. It should be a really good match. Damian Priest is going to win, of course. Timothy Thatcher should not win. We got Imperium getting a tag team title rematch against Brizango. And then like I brought up earlier, Io Shirai versus Shati Blackheart. Non-title. So we got that for next Wednesday's NXT again. If NXT is unopposed, then I will be back Wednesday night next week for NXT. And if it's going up against AEW, I'll be doing the NXT review Thursday night next week. Main event. Mercedes Martinez versus Rhea Ripley. This should have opened the show. I don't know why this main event of the show. Something crazy had to happen for it to satisfy me enough to be the main event over that NXT championship match. But I don't know. It was decent. It was fun. It was fun. But at the end of the day, I just felt like I didn't really care that much. The match was pretty good. It was, de it was a decent steel cage match. I mean, they had chairs, kendo sticks, a table at the end. Robert Stone was trying to get involved, trying to up the cage. Rhea poked a kendo stick at him. 
Then she beat him up at the top of the cage. Rhea uh, Mercedes choke slammed Rhea down to the ring canvas. And then at the end, Rhea Ripley had the riptide on Mercedes Martinez. And she beat her. Rhea Ripley won the steel cage match against Mercedes Martinez. Like I said, they used chairs, a kendo stick. And then at the end, obviously Rhea Ripley hit the riptide on Mercedes Martinez for the victory. Decent steel cage match. Fun match. But they should have definitely opened up the show and not main evented over that that awesome NXT Championship match that we got earlier on in the show. But, I mean, besides the opening NXT Championship match with Finn Balor and Adam Cole and the main event, this show was lackluster. If I had to describe one word for tonight's NXT, that word is lackluster. And I'm getting out of here for tonight. Thank you guys so much for tuning for tuning in to the NXT review here on the channel. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button right now for more content this week. I think I'm going to post some sports content on Thursday. Football season starts Thursday. The Houston Texans play the Kansas City Chiefs on Thursday night. I think I'm going to drop my NFL 2020, 20, uh, 2020, 2021 season predictions. So that will be up Thursday. I, I might do that. I'll let you guys know either tomorrow or Thursday morning. Uh, I want you to comment down below. What did you think about tonight's episode of NXT tonight? Hit that like button if you liked what I had to say about tonight's episode of NXT. And follow me on Twitter at Colin underscore Joseph. You're going to want to follow me over there. And I will see you guys tomorrow here on the Big Fight Field channel with AEW Dynamite. We got a big show tomorrow night. We have a guest on the channel, my friend Nathan Hansen over on Twitter. He was at the All Out pay-per-view last Saturday. We're going to talk about Dynamite tomorrow night, which is headlined by Dustin Rhodes versus Brody Lee for the TNT Championship. And we're going to talk about his experience this past Saturday at All Out. So look forward to that tomorrow night after Dynamite goes off the air. And I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Have a good night and stay safe.